It's great to be joined right now by Congressman Mike Johnson of uh, Louisiana's 4th Congressional District, who serves on uh, the Select Committee on the we Weaponization of the Federal Government. He is the chair of the Subcommittee of the, on the Constitution and Limited Government and serves on the House Judiciary Committee. This is all falling under those parameters. And Congressman Johnson, it's great to have you on the broadcast. Let me ask you first about this. Uh, a new letter which has, has now shed light, gives us more information, that the FBI utilized an undercover agent to go inside what I guess one of these so-called radically traditionalist Catholic churches uh, to try and get information and analysis uh, about outreach to parishes to develop, this is from the letter, sources among the clergy and church leadership to inform on Americans practicing their faith. Sounds like something that would happen in, the, in communist countries, not in the United States of America. That's exactly right, Jordan. Great to talk with you. And, and everybody just heard that right. Um, the FBI itself uh, was seeking to recruit undercover agents in Christian Catholic churches, right? And, and, and the reason is, the purported reason, is because they were concerned with what they called the threat, this is a quote, the threat of radical traditionalist Catholics, um, e.g. Uh, pro-lifers. <laughs> those who... Those who <laughs> right, right. Th those who actually practice their faith, right? Um, th that's a threat to this FBI, to this the Biden administration and the White House and the leadership of the DOJ. And so they are uh, they were going to dispatch agents out to the churches to go and uh, to find spies inside the, the hallways. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and it, it goes a step further. They were going to try even to, and I, I think for everybody listening to our broadcast, so we got a lot of people who would fall under the traditional faith category that you know believe in what they're. Uh, what they are, what their churches teach, and their faith, uh, and their practice of their faith, whether they're Catholic or Protestant, uh, and I think they're listening right now, going, "I wonder this is happening to us too." If you know our church happens to be pro-life, or I happen to be, you know, uh, someone who's involved in the pro-life movement, is this who they're really coming after? And they even are trying to turn churches and Catholic leaders against other Catholic leaders. It said they expressed an interest in contacting so-called mainline Catholic parishes. So. You have the federal government here getting directly involved, uh, Congressman Johnson, in religious affairs, like d labeling who is a traditionalist and who's a mainline Catholic. That's exactly right. And they also wanted to recruit, and this is all in the documents, Jordan. We're not, we're not, this isn't, we're not surmising this. We have it in, in writing uh, that they wanted to, uh, to, to recruit and, and, and work with the local diocesan leadership, apparently to find some some who might be sympathetic to the FBI's pl uh, plot, I guess, um, their plan, and and to engage them in, in the process. I mean, it's just, it's almost surreal that it's come to this. And, and it sounds like we're making this stuff up, but it's in the documents. And so we, we sent a letter uh, 48 hours ago to FBI Director Chris Ray himself um, because we need him to uh, assist in the production of the documents. They sent us redacted versions of some of this. We only gotten 18 pages. We've been asking for it for over a month. and. Um, so we, he's going to have to come forward himself and, and ensure that this, this material is sent to us. We have a constitutional responsibility of oversight in the Congress, and they are not complying with our request. And this is obviously an issue of great concern to millions and millions of Americans. Folks, we're talking to Congressman Mike Johnson. I mean, Congressman, this idea, again, I, you know, I, th I saw the first time Christopher Ray addressed this, you know, he tried to say, well, this was the, we, we saw it in Richmond and we shut it down. But then there is concern that this memo went further and wider as well, that it, it may not have stayed in Richmond. And we've seen this time and time again, when, whether it's dealing with the IRS, whether it's dealing with law enforcement, is that they will try to blame a local office uh, and say, you know, we had nothing to do with it out of the headquarters. And then you find out later that, in fact, uh, this did spread far and wide until they got caught. That's exactly right. And we put in our letter to Christopher Ray uh, that we know from whistleblowers. This is a fact that the FBI did distribute this document to field offices around the country. Now, we don't know, as you and I speak, how many FBI employees actually explored these, quote, new avenues for tripwire and source development in Catholic houses of worship around the country. But uh, obviously, that is a very, very important question to be answered. And that's why we have to pursue this so, so vigorously. You know, th this is not a political exercise, Jordan. This is about the most basic right and freedoms that we have as Americans. And, and, and you and I have de devoted most of our careers and lives to the defense of religious liberty. And the reason is because we know that's our first freedom. It's so essential to who we are as Americans. And when religious freedom is taken from a people, their political freedom soon follows. And so we, this, is a, this is just a steamroll over the First Amendment. And, and of course, 
as one of the clips you played earlier indicates, I mean, implies, this would have a chilling effect as well, potentially a great chilling effect on people to actually go and worship at a Catholic church, a traditional Catholic church, because they may be concerned that there's some FBI-recruited snitch a few pews behind them that may be starting a you know a threat assessment file on them. I mean, it's very, very serious stuff. And it does seem they're using, they're kind of using this vague that they believe that this could be a recruiting ground for racially motivated or ethnically motivated violent extremists. But it seems to me, Congressman, as, we, as we've seen, uh, the FBI, it, it seems more interested in pro-life, uh, people who are pro-life, whether they are peaceful protesters, they run pro-life pregnancy centers, because we've seen this administration define that work as uh, almost illegal. They, they try to say it's misinformation, disinformation, and what they're doing is wrong. And so they, they have, uh, in a sense, demonized uh, having a, a, a religiously held or deeply held pro-life position that you may actually act on. That's exactly right. And they often use racial animus as cover uh, to go after, you know, conservatives. And of course, it holds no no water. And uh, it, remember, too, there is no allegation here. This is a critical fact. There is no allegation of criminal activity. OK, this, this is to cast a broad net and go after conservatives for their deeply held, sincerely held religious beliefs. I mean, there's no other way to read this. And that's why Christopher Ray, when he was first asked about it, he immediately backpedaled and said, oh, no, no, no that, that's, we're not about that. Yeah, because whistleblowers came forward and they got caught. You know, I, I, th- th- there's a pattern of this. We have dozens of whistleblowers who have come forward to the Weaponization Committee, and they're, the, the, the things that they're uncovering and revealing and showing to the Congress is just absolutely shocking. And we have to ensure that this madness does not ever doesn't continue and is never allowed to happen again because this is not who we are as Americans. No, and, and this it goes to the the, the the people's trust and faith in our institutions. It's why this select committee on the weaponization of the federal government exists. It's not to just go after FBI agents. It's because if we've got to have an FBI that people trust is doing the right thing. I mean, that's our all of our institutions are based on the fact that uh, they, they are going to they are humans. They might make some errors sometimes. But generally speaking, their their policy and their their what they're hoping to do is to do the right thing for the American people, not against the American people who are going to church. That's it. I and mean, our system relies upon that, that justice is blind, that there's not two systems of justice, that you can't weaponize uh, our, 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 our justice system itself to go after people who have different religious or political viewpoints. And that's exactly what is happening right now. Um, under Merrick Garland as the attorney general, under this FBI. And, and you know, we have to track it down and, and strike it down at the root because it is undermining, as you said, the people's faith in our institutions themselves and in a constitutional republic that is still an experiment on the world stage. You know, we're only almost 247 years into this. We don't know how long a government of by and for the people can last. But one thing that is absolutely essential to maintain those foundations is the people's trust in, in the system itself. And it, and this is, uh, you know, there's nothing more serious than undermining that. Congressman Johnson, we appreciate you joining us and we appreciate the work you're doing. You know, it shows again by, uh, again, having these committees, having that select committee on the weaponization of the federal government. Something that's been necessary for years. Now you're doing it. We, we so appreciate that work. and appreciate you joining us on the broadcast today. That's Congressman Mike Johnson. And again, he is leading a charge here along with Chairman Jordan of the Judiciary Committee to get to the bottom of this information because, again, we have a country that's worth fighting for.